Hey everybody, so as she said, my name is Rebecca. I work at Red Hat. Um, I am a program manager to think about how do we scale the open aspects of our culture. So the pieces of our culture that are very much inspired by open source, rooted in open source ethos, how do we scale those things? And so here today to talk about a very popular topic inside Red Hat and outside, which is if you have a lot of opinions and you have people who feel very free to speak up, how do you ever make a decision that sticks and not just endlessly debate and revisit your decisions? And so I don't have all the answers for you. I certainly don't have all the answers in 25 minutes, but uh, we can at least get to the beginning of where things might lead. If you have questions, just raise your hand and I will uh, take them in the middle. All right, so I'm gonna start with a question of my own. When have you seen debate be valuable and helpful? Or on the other side, when is it not so helpful? It's just that when you're evaluating technical solutions, figure which component do I use? There's all the multipliers out there. It's really helpful. So you find it helpful when you're trying to decide as a sysadmin, what are you going to which use? Which product or which, which open source project or which downstream product should we use? Which product should we use? Gotcha. And so why is it helpful? Okay. Uh, well, you know, you may have done some research and you may have, you understand some pros and cons, but other people list other pros and cons. And, you know, with an organization like a business or a nonprofit or, you know, it's like people might point out, oh, we need this more importantly, we need that. And these right. users right. We users need this. So you get to learn about things you might not have thought of on your own, pros and cons. I saw a hand go up over here. Yeah, and I would say in general, at the beginning, it's very helpful. <laughs> yes, at the beginning, it's very helpful, probably because you don't know the answer yet, right? In the back. I was, I was found the debate is useful when everyone agrees on what they're debating. Ah, so when the uh, debate is well framed, it could be quite useful. Anything else? I think when you're trying to influence, and oh. um, so to be able to have that debate, to also understand where somebody else is coming from and what their perspective is so that you can challenge your own. So useful in challenging your own thinking and potentially changing someone else's opinion. All right, when is it not so helpful? When the decision's already been made. <laughs> uh, so after the decision has been made, debate less helpful. When the debate never ends. Yeah, when it never ends, yeah. Why, why does it never end? Sometimes because people aren't listening or they just aren't going to agree, right? When else? When there's like one, when you may have like a group of 10 people and one of them is just like toxic. <laughs> <laughs> when people are arguing just because they enjoy arguing sometimes. Or, or there's no reason why somebody would He's like camera point to death, even when there's no, there's so much logic against his arguments, and he still insists on making the same arguments over and over again. All right, I won't even try to rephrase that. I think we all understand that one. Go ahead. When the moderator debates, doesn't know how to really handle it. Ah, so when the person who is kind of supposed to do something with this debate gets sort of stuck and doesn't know what to do. Yeah, they kind of freeze up, or they don't ever make a decision. Yeah, or just shut down. They don't encourage people or coach them to, to agree or, or get the decision. Gotcha. So they're not so great sometimes at moving toward alignment on some kind of decision. All right. Anything else you want to throw out there? So when we decide we're going to keep just rehashing the same argument. I made my argument. No one agrees, so I'll just say the same argument again. Got it. All right, lots of uh, good things to think about as we talk about this. All right, so now I want you to think about a time when there was one of those endless arguments, endless debates, and you knew, I probably should drop this now, but you didn't. For whatever reason, you just kept bringing it up. Even though you had that feeling, I should stop now, you just kept bringing it up. Anybody ever done this? Okay, why? <laughs> you knew you were right. Okay, what about up here? Uh, because I didn't know how to get rid of this. I didn't know how to stop? Uh, not how to stop, but how to get rid of this in my thinking or in my thoughts. How to continue on. I didn't know how to move forward without continuing to argue. Yeah. Why else? 
because I was somehow attached to the topic and I really wanted to be done the right way and not the way I did not like. I was attached to one particular outcome and I felt that was the right, right way to go. Gotcha. Anything else? <laughs> the answer is obvious and they're not getting it. Yeah. So I want you to hold on to that. Has anybody never had the experience where you felt like you wanted to just keep arguing when you shouldn't? Is this a pretty universal experience? We've all been there at some point. So so? No, I feel like I, I would drop it in the end. In the end. All right, well, good for you. We should learn from you. <laughs> so the rest of you, I want you to hold on to that feeling that you had and remember what that felt like because that is actually really, really useful when it's your decision that you're trying to make stick and you're struggling with someone who's in that space, right? If you can remember what motivated you in that moment to keep arguing, it helps a lot with how you handle it. All right, common causes. Go ahead. How can you get rid of it? How can you get rid of it? This argument and this stuff which is keeping us continuing so the question was, how can you get rid of the recurring debates? Don't work with humans. <laughs> but there are ways, right? But universally speaking, that impulse to keep pushing, it will always be there. There are, however, that's what we're going to talk about, some ways you can, I would say, sidestep maybe 80%. 100% I can't give you, but 80% we can probably do. We'll get into it. All right, so I do want to talk about what are some of those common causes. I don't feel heard, right? If I don't feel that you're listening, like you're hearing but you're not listening, I'm probably going to feel that impulse to keep pushing. I don't feel valued. So you listen to me, but yet, for whatever reason, you're not valuing what I'm saying. So if I'm telling you I'm impacted and you're saying I'm moving forward, I might be hearing that as your opinion doesn't matter to me. The impact this has on you doesn't matter to me. Maybe I don't trust your intentions as a decision maker, right? Many times we continue to push because we think, I think there's some reason for this decision that I don't agree with. Or you say this is the reason why you're making it, I'm not sure I believe you, right? That's a very strong driver. Maybe I'm just bringing this up because I didn't know someone made a decision, right? New people join communities every day, join projects. I might be bringing up something that's been brought up many times before and have no idea that it's been talked about. Um, maybe I can't make sense of the decision, right? We heard a lot of that in the back today. Maybe the decision you made just doesn't make sense to me. Maybe I just dislike the decision. I disagree with it, right? That's a common reason. Maybe you and I have competing or conflicting interests. So maybe what is most important to you is not what is most important to me. That's going to be hard for us to come to an agreement and move on. Maybe my goal here is to overturn the decision or to make you revisit it. So that's why I keep bringing it up, right? And maybe I just enjoy arguing for argument's sake. And I think what's funny about this one is when I ask people, why do you think this person keeps bringing the same thing up? They always start there. I think they just like to argue, <laughs> right? But when I ask people in a room, you know that time when you kept pushing, why was it? No one ever says that. <laughs> I'm not saying there's nobody out there who doesn't just enjoy arguing for arguing's sake, but they won't admit it, so you might as well give up on that one. All right, we covered it pretty well there, reasons why this might happen. Anything else you would add to the list? Yeah, often I feel like somebody doesn't understand one of the concepts. They, like, they may just nod, but they don't actually understand. Yeah, so I might be missing some key piece of information. Either I didn't understand it, or I totally miss the reason why. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Okay. So let's kind of, we'll come back to this in a bit, but what I would posit to you is there is a way of approaching decisions that will help you sidestep a good 80% of this. It's not going to get you to 100%, but most people, if you approach decisions in a certain way, you can keep them out of this space entirely. I don't know why my buttons are backwards. There we go. So how do you make decisions that stick, right? The argument I would make to you is follow a predictable process, one that's designed to prevent those kinds of causes of recurring disagreement. Um, we at Red Hat have a much longer version of this. It's called the Open Decision Framework. It's sort of our set of best practices. You can find it on GitHub and remix it to your heart's content, and make it work for you. But what I'm going to give you today is sort of this streamlined, everyday decision version of this. So at the heart of it, what are we talking about when we say follow a predictable process? 
So I'm going to walk you through step by step, four steps, what does that process look like? And I'm going to show you in the real world what does it look like to actually do this. So step one, think and draft. What are the details about this decision? And what would your ideal decision making process for it look like? Right? So what is the decision you're trying to make? Frame up that. What is the problem you're trying to solve here? When do you need to make this decision? How do you think is the right way to go about making it? Right? If you're going to think about who is going to be responsible, how is it going to look? Who might be impacted by it? Who might care? Right? So do some thinking up front. Who gets a voice? Who gets a vote? Because those aren't always the same thing. Right? How are you going to go about getting their input? Who is the ultimate decision maker going to be? And why should that person be the ultimate decision maker? And if it's not a one person, OK, maybe you have some other way of doing it. What's your forcing function? If it comes down to two people and they disagree, then what? So you want to know kind of what does that path forward look like in my mind? What's the ideal state? What are the known constraints, the known requirements going into this? So you're really kind of just framing up the problem and framing up the process up front in your own head. And it makes sense to put it down on paper because you're going to want to share it with other people. Step one. All right, step two, call for comments. So this is when you're going to take what you just put together, which is hopefully not terribly long, and you're going to say, hey, here are the details about the decision and the process I think makes sense to follow. Let's have a discussion about it. Let's debate this stuff right up front. Right? So it's time boxed. You want to invite a time boxed discussion and debate about all of these factors. Why up front? Why open the floor to debating these things before you're talking about the decision itself? Eliminate those factors of the anti for people that don't say, well, you never considered that, so why should we move forward? Right. For most people, if they understand at the beginning, here's what the process is, they don't so much go back and try to pick apart the process later on. Why else? Well, if you see, for comments in the very beginning, People will know that there are questions to ask, and they will not return back to their questions. Yes, yeah, so what was said was, for many people at least, giving that chance up front to provide, to ask questions or give comments, gives that, puts it out there in the open, and people don't necessarily feel like they have to go back later on and do it again. Did I say that right? Yeah. Other questions? Comments? All right, like I said, 80%. The 20% we'll get to. All right. So your goal in this is to make it safe for everybody to disagree, to question, and to alert you to mistakes. Right? Because early on, we may think, I know it makes sense. I know who should make this decision. I know how it should be done. I know what the constraints are. It's very tempting to move forward at that stage and just say, great, here's the decision. Take a minute to just entertain the possibility we might be missing something, right? We might not know everything. And I get this question a lot from people. They say, if I already know what the right answer is, and it's up to me to make the decision, why shouldn't I just make it? And my answer to that is, well, I can't answer that question for you. And some types of decisions, maybe you should. But the answer I would give you if you ask me, if you think you know the right answer, why don't you just say it and be done, is I've been wrong before. So just a moment up front to consider that possibility might save me a whole lot of headache later on. So this is for when you already have defined options or when you already have some possible decisions, mm -hmm. right? This is not for like, when you don't really know what to do and <laughs> anything is possible. So you could use it in that circumstance. You might frame the conversation a little differently, right? Most of the time, we kind of have a hunch, at least, of what the options are. but. Sometimes it is very open-ended, and then maybe it's more of a brainstorming conversation. And at this stage, the other thing I will say, too, is listen far more than you respond. So you will get a lot of questions, but many times those questions are really more like objections in the form of a question. Um, or you might get a lot of instant feedback that, wait, 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 I don't like any of this. I don't know about any of this. So it's very tempting to just jump in and defend. Here's where I thought I was coming from. Pause for a moment and let that conversation happen, right? If you need to clarify something, sure, go ahead, jump in and do it. But it's OK to just take some time to absorb what is the reaction that's coming in. And if you listen in that moment, you might find, rather than just responding, if you listen, you might find that you learn something new that shifts your perspective. It's very tempting early on to feel real attached to, I'm pretty sure I knew where this was going. Just withhold judgment for a little bit. All right, 
So real world, how does it look? Maybe it's an email. Call for comments, changes to Glog and Foo. As maintainer of Glog and Foo, I want to give you all a heads up about a decision, some decisions I'm making that may impact your workflow. I'm planning to do these things for these reasons. These individuals or groups could be impacted in these ways. I'm unaware of any other impacts, so please respond by this date if there's something or somebody that I'm missing. Based on what I hear from everybody between now and then, explain the process, right? I'm going to make the decision, I'm going to put it up for a vote by these individuals, so on and so forth. Disagree with my approach? Let's talk as soon as possible. Thanks, Glog and Foo Maintainer. All right. Step three, revise the process. Because inevitably, most of the time, you're going to learn something from that conversation that's going to make you go, oh, wait a second, the way I thought we should approach this decision, it's off a little somewhere. That's a good time to kind of go back and say, OK, quick publishing of I said this was the process. Here's what the actual process is going to be and why. Clarify, what are those details about the decision that you saw questions about or misunderstandings, mis um, misinterpretations? Clarify that stuff. And highlight, when you're making changes to the process, based on what you heard, highlight that you're doing that. I'll show you in a minute what that looks like. Also, you are going to get, inevitably, some feedback about the process or the decision details that you're not going to act on. So it's also time to acknowledge that and explain why. Here's what that looks like. All right, revised, call for comments, changes to Glog and Foo. Thanks for the input. A few changes to the decision process based on what I heard. One. It makes sense to move forward with one of the decisions only if these three individuals all vote yes. That's because reasons. Two, for the other decisions, I'm going to make the decision as maintainer because reasons. There was a request for a community vote, which I declined on list for reasons. Somebody helpful pointed out downstream project that's going to be greatly impacted. So I'm extending the call for comments by this period of time to get their input. I'm sending a final announcement on March 2nd regarding these decisions and the implementation timing. Thanks. Right? Straightforward, doesn't have to be terribly complicated, but everybody understands where you are, where you're headed, changes made, and why. Also, they at least hear that you heard the request to open this up for a democratic vote. All right, fourth and last step, publish the decision. So you spent a lot of time up front getting the details in shape, getting the process set, people understand where you're going, listening. Now it's time to kind of close this out. So you're going to recap what was the process that you got here by. You are going to identify what are your conditions or timeline for revisiting. Sometimes that's necessary. So what it looks like. Decisions reached, changes to Glog and Foo. Hi, everybody. Thanks for your input and discussion. Here's where everything landed. The three individuals all voted yes on moving forward with one of the decisions. They cited these reasons as key factors. This is going to happen on or about this date. We heard specific concerns and thus are going to revisit that decision when or under what conditions. Right? This is a nice way of dealing with the feedback that eh, it's not really going to shift it, but maybe. Right? Worst case scenario, we'll revisit. For the other decisions, I decided to do these specific things. You're going to see these changes implemented round about this time frame. There was some concern from a couple individuals about this one thing, which is why I'm going to do this. I also heard this concern over here, but ultimately I had to make a judgment call. Hopefully, we can reduce that risk by doing this thing over here. If you see questions about these decisions in the future, please refer people back to this thread for context. Right? So in that last little bit, I'm already a little bit preemptively saying decision has been made, and if people have questions, come back here first. That helps quite a bit. You're going to get some help from some of your friends, hopefully. All right. So 80%, most of the time, if I do a good job of the listening, that's going to settle most of it, right? I've taken into account people's feedback, given them a chance, they know where it's headed, feel like they had their opportunity. 20%, the debate will probably rage on. And I will say, some people just take time, right, to kind of grapple with. I voiced an opinion, it was not received as fact, and now we have to move on. So if the debate continues in the immediate aftermath, great. You don't have to engage necessarily. You've said what needs to be said, let them have their say for a minute or a week, or a month, move on, make decision. However, sometimes it just goes on for a long, long time, right? And you get a sense after a while, if you're somebody who makes decisions, you kind of get a feel for, is this one going to fade out or not? Is it going to keep coming up? If it keeps coming up, that's a good time to play detective. So come back to, why might they be doing this? Because what you do in response is probably going to depend a lot on the motivation of the person who's bringing it up or the group of people. 
I can't tell you the exact answer to that, right? It's a case by case kind of thing, but understanding what's behind what they're saying matters a lot. What are some ways you can figure out why are they doing this? Ask them and then ask again and ask a third time, right? Because usually it takes about three times to get to the real reason. What else? What was that? The five whys, right? Why, 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 why? That's why I say ask them again and ask them a third time. Maybe it's five. Keep asking. Yeah. You can also look at the words they're using. Sometimes it's in the words somewhere, but often the words are kind of a mask and you have to go deeper. So you can ask specifically. You keep bringing this up. Is it because you feel like I'm not listening? No, it's because blah, 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 right? So I right away, if I offer a pretty neutral reason why, they're going to correct me even if I get it wrong. And if I guess right, okay, great. We can start to have a conversation about it. I can usually turn the tide on the 15 of that 20, right? So if I've got 20% left, 15% or so with some one-on-one -on -one conversations and just being genuinely curious as to why do you keep bringing this up, we can get to a place where, okay, we might need to agree to disagree. I might need to rethink something, but we can probably settle things down. The last 5%, we're not going to cover in 20 minutes, but you know, we can have a hallway conversation about it. How many minutes do we have left, by the way? Five to go. All right, what questions do you have? Three at once, okay. I'm going to go all the way in the back first. So talk about, about this from the perspective of the decision maker. But what is the role of the participants in this conversation? Good question. So the question was, um, we talked a lot about from the perspective of the decision maker, and the reverse side of that is what is expected of a participant in a process. I think it's a good question. Um, I suppose that my answer to that would depend on who I'm talking to. So if I'm talking to you as an individual participant, I would say play nice, right? So, you know, if somebody is inviting you to be heard and they're inviting you to sway their decision in some way, try to be reasonable in that process. If you feel like they're just really not listening, voice that. You know, you can say, I feel like you've asked for my opinion, but I'm getting these signs that indicate maybe you're not actually interested in what I have to say. Show me where I'm wrong, right? Help me understand. So that is one piece that's helpful. Um, if I'm in more of a role where I'm responsible for kind of how is the community as a whole interacting and behaving, then I might take a different approach, right? I might say, you know, my responsibility might be to kind of bring the community up a level when I see, hey, the behavior that's happening here is not real helpful. I might talk about, you know, we really can only create things together if we all work together well and, you know, if it seems like you're just picking apart every decision anybody's trying to make, that's not a real helpful behavior. Let's talk about what's a more productive way to participate in this. So it would kind of depend on who I'm talking to. What would you add? I think um, part, part of what I, I, is interesting to me is who gets to be in the parts of conversation, too. So um, extending that call to comments to um, who, who gets to participate in that. All right, so I'm going to try to rephrase that for the recording. Um, so what Diane said was one concern she has is how do you make sure that all the right people are invited to participate? And it certainly is a challenge. The larger a project is, larger an organization is, you don't necessarily want to blast everybody about everything because at some point it becomes hard for anybody to find anything that's relevant to them. Um, but that's where that question up front of who would be impacted, who might care, can be really helpful. And I think a really good way to get past your own limitations of who you're aware of is to ask that same question early on of everybody who is aware, right? So who else might care? Who else might be impacted? I don't know about. Um, and being flexible enough to extend your timing a little bit where needed to make sure that you reach out to those people. Because if you just ignore groups of people who have an opinion, you're just gonna, it's gonna be more time later, right? You, don't, you never really get to make that time up. It comes back to haunt you. I saw a question over here. Uh, have you been in a situation where a truly stakeholder, a really powerful stakeholder, uh, is a decision maker and they push a decision to be taken just because that makes uh, Greenfield on their tables, 
but you have to do something which is either wrong with the team or wrong with the technologies. Yeah, so that question was about bad actors. Um, have you ever been in a situation where you had a decision maker who was really making a decision that was best for themselves or their own group, but not best for the whole? Yes. <laughs> um, I don't know that any of us have not. Um, I will say that's probably a hallway conversation because it would take me more than two minutes. But the biggest thing I think you can do is try to find what is the shared purpose that you and they both share. and hold that up for them, ask them, you know, it seems like the decision you're making is great for this group here. I also know you care about the broader community. I'm having a hard time reconciling what I'm seeing here, right? Open it, approach with curiosity, and you might have some luck. I think we're out of time. Thank you all very much. I'll be outside if you want to talk more.